Good morning. Today is Good Friday. But what's good about it, I hear you ask? Why would we call the crucifixion of Jesus good? Probably because good, historically, was also a word used for holy. And so perhaps I'd be better off saying to you, welcome to Holy Friday. This morning I want to lead you in a brief time to pause and to stop as we remember the events of the first Easter. And we're going to do that using music, a reading and a thought for today. So as we begin, I invite you just to sit comfortably as we listen to some words from a wonderful hymn. Let's, as we continue, listen to some words of scripture as they're read to us. Today's reading is Luke 23, verse 32 to 49. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they were crucified him along with the criminals one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a note written above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for what we are getting and the deed our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour. The darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. 
When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the other people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what had took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Praise be to God for his word. Are we ever outside of God's love? That's a question that many people, while they don't ask, actually kind of live and presume in their life. Something will happen to them, most likely something that they did, and it will make them feel like they're outside of God's love, that God could never love them anymore. Maybe as you're listening or watching this, that's how you feel right now. There's something in your life, maybe a secret that you hold, or maybe something that you're ashamed of. And it makes you think that you've put yourself out of God's reach. There's no way God could ever love you or that you could ever experience his love. If that's how you feel, then you need to know today that the reading we've just had reminds us that actually the opposite is true. That reading that we've just heard reminds us that no one is outside of God's love. No one is unable to be saved. Because the love of God is extended even to a thief on the cross as Jesus was crucified. Who asks for hope. And he's told by Jesus that today he will be with him in paradise. So what does that mean? It means that no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, that if we turn to Christ and if we ask for forgiveness, that we can know that forgiveness in our lives. We can know what it means to be forgiven and to be with God for all eternity. The only difference, though, between the story of the thief on the cross and your life is this, is that I would encourage you, in fact, I'd plead with you not to leave it to that last moment just as a thief did, but to think about it now. In fact, the Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. And the Bible encourages us not to put off till tomorrow what we can do today. So the events of Good Friday, the impact of Good Friday is that Jesus died on a cross. He died, the Bible says, to take your sin onto himself. In fact, the fact the Bible describes it like this, that the one who was without sin became sin for you and for me. What's more, this wasn't a random event that happened. Throughout Lent, we've been thinking about a theme entitled Redemption. And that mean we, by that we've been looking back at how the whole of the story of the Bible, in fact all of creation, is a story of redemption of God ever since the events of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden wanting to restore humanity back to himself. God's been in the business of doing that. We thought about stories like the flood and Noah or the exodus as the people of God were brought out of Egypt. Or there's the story of Abraham and Isaac and the lamb that's provided for a sacrifice. There's the lesson that we learn about Ruth and the kinsman Redeemer. There's the stories of the parables that Jesus told. The parable of the prodigal son or, or the lost sheep or the lost coin. See, all of those events, all of those stories lead us to the cross. They lead us to the events of today, of Holy Friday. Where on the cross Jesus suffered and paid the penalty for our sin. Where the weight of sin is no longer ours, but is placed on Christ. Today then is holy. But today is also good, in that because of the cross we have good news to share. So today, will you take time to allow the love, the mercy and the grace of God to touch your life? Today is the day of salvation. And so can I encourage you, come to Jesus, ask for forgiveness, become a child of God. Let's pray together. Jesus, on this Good Friday, as I come to the cross, I thank you for your life that was given for me. I thank you that you died to take onto yourself my sin. Today, may I once again know your forgiveness May I know your healing, 
And may I experience your grace and mercy, for I ask this in your holy name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, can I encourage you, wherever you are, to contact us through the church website or use the email address that's on the screen now. We'd love to just be in contact with you and to pray with you, and if need be, to put you in contact with a local church that's able to help you to grow in your faith. We call that discipleship. We hope you learn more about what it means to be a follower who trusts in Jesus Christ. But for now, I'm going to close with some words of the benediction. After these words, a song will be played and I want to encourage you to sit and to just listen to the words. To allow them just to be absorbed into your soul. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. sound that saved a wretch like me. Now once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. Great.